three games into the 2022 season, the Minnesota Vikings are 2-1. and one. And I want to take a look at how the Purple's rookie draft class is looking so far. But before we get into the onion layers, real quick, tight end Nick Muse, he's on the practice squad. Wide receiver Jalen Naylor, the earliest that he can maybe get an opportunity, I would say, is next year. That's assuming that Adam Thielen is gone. For now, the wide receiver group is way too steep, one through three anyway. And you can make the argument that as long as Jalen Rieger, if he continues to put up minimal production per snap, then okay, give Jalen Naylor a shot. Vidarian Lowe, he's a depth guy as long as Christian Derisaw and Brian O'Neill are around, which as far as I'm concerned, that's forever. And Asezi Otomewo currently third on the depth chart as a left end. Probably going to stay that way as long as the Vikings keep him on the roster. Now we get to the nitty gritty here. Ty Chandler. For this season, he may get an opportunity at some PT, perhaps on Sunday in London against the New Orleans Saints. That is depending on the status of Dalvin Cook. Suffered a shoulder injury last Sunday against the Lions. Head coach Kevin O'Connell says he's day-to-day. So if Cook ends up not playing, obviously Alexander Madison, he's your RB1. And I wouldn't be surprised in order to preserve Kane and Wangu as a kick returner, I wouldn't be surprised if Ty Chandler is the immediate backup to RB1. And still, going into next season, we know that Madison is as good as gone. They're going to let him walk away in free agency. But even Dalvin Cook, I've been saying this for a while now, that because of the position that he plays, the cliff is going to come when you least expect it, and it may happen next year. Justin Jefferson, a contract for him is looming. Money's going to be tight. I firmly believe the Vikings will exercise their two post-June 1st designations for Adam Thielen and Dalvin Cook. And if that is the case, 2023 could shape up to be Ty Chandler's season. Now with Caleb Evans. Played 27 snaps so far, and I think it's only a matter of time before he eventually starts. That is, if the coaching staff is comfortable with making those tough decisions. And if I had to guess of our current starting outside corners, P2 will eventually sit. Patrick Peterson is very fortunate to not have ended up on Sports Center's top 10 in two of the three games played. There was week one against Green Bay, first play for the Packers offense. Christian Watson, he beats Peterson deep, should have been a 75 yard touchdown play. Aaron Rodgers, he throws him the ball. Oh, hits his hands and he drops it. Woo! Live to fight another down. And then last Sunday against the Lions, I don't remember who this was exactly, but Jared Goff, he had a man wide open, also beating Peterson deep, but the sunlight that beamed through the roof of U.S. Bank Stadium was just enough of a distraction. Uh, Caleb Evans, his time is coming, coming out of the University of Missouri. I loved his game so much. And the reason why I'm talking about him, uh, Caleb Evans, and not Andrew Booth Jr. is that Booth, with the quad injury, who knows when it will be realistic to expect any contributions from him. He had the, the hernia surgery in March. In fact, he has a long history of injuries, Andrew Booth Jr. And I don't blame Quasi Adolfo Mensa for drafting him. I don't, because when he's healthy, he's a first-round talent. Quasi knew the risk selecting him, but the potential reward was far too great to pass up. In the second round, too? Come on. But for now, we wait. Brian Asamoa, he needs to play. Are you kidding me? So far, he's been restricted to special teams duties, zero defensive snaps in three games. I'm not saying the man should start, but third and long, obvious passing down situations, he needs to be on the football field. Eventually, he better start, if not this year, certainly next year. But he needs to be out there on the football field. The way that he closes on the football, his speed, his tackling abilities is so electric. He makes tackling entertaining. Did y'all see that tackle that he made on the kickoff return in the second quarter against the Lions? He technically, for any other player, he was out of position. Got a hand on the chest, took a giant leap wrapped his arm around the player, spun him around to the ground. Very few players can do that. It was basically the equivalent of an RKO in the most legal way possible. And he has zero defensive snaps so far. That's ridiculous. And the biggest impact made by a rookie so far is right guard Ed Ingram. Beat out Jesse Davis for the starting job, built himself up a lot of hype in training camp and the preseason. And for pass protection, although it needs a little bit of work, as a help blocker in pass protection, he's excellent. 
He, I can't believe I'm saying this. He, along with Garrett Bradbury, they did some damage on Sunday against the Lions. I tell you what, but his run blocking is great. He's a tone setter, aggressive. We finally have, finally have our right guard of the future. Thank God. And lastly, Lewisine. One defensive snap in two games. Now he was out week one against the Packers, but the last two games, one defensive snap total, your first round pick. Even with Hitman out last week against the Lions, he's still not worthy to play. I mean, hell, if you want to rotate him for a couple of plays a game in triple safety sets, whatever the hell, I don't care. What is the problem? At some point, this man, Lewis C., needs to be allowed to deliver on the hype that Quasi Adafo Mensa created. You can't protect him forever. And now introducing a segment where I respond to three comments made by you, the viewers, from the previous video. We're going to start with Theo. Laughing my ass off. Also, stop saying Daniil Hunter is ineffective as a stand-up rusher. Dude was still getting pressure against good tackles, and the advanced numbers back it up. Lions were getting the ball out quickly. He's fine. Stop being so hasty. Edit. Wow, the rest of this video even hastier. Bynum is not a disaster at safety. What? Also seen as a rookie who suffered in training camp. He's behind. Stop making panic moves. Okay, I want to start with the scene point first. How long do you think a player needs, even if he's technically behind, how long do you think a player needs before he's ready to get out there on the football field? We are heading into week four, and we're talking about a first-round pick. If not now, when? And I'm not trying to be a smartass. What, does he need another three or four weeks before he's finally good to go? And on the Daniil Hunter point, well, he got good pressure, and the advanced numbers back it up. Here's what we're not going to do. We are not going to turn Daniil Hunter, who before he got hurt, the last two seasons before he got hurt, basically averaged a sack a game. So far this season, in three games, he has one sack and two TFLs. What we are not going to do is turn a player of his caliber into Anthony Barr. Well, the sack number is not there, but look at these advanced metrics. We're not going to do that today. Next up, I like Apple says, yep, Hunter needs to be putting his hands on the ground. Dude rushes as an outside linebacker like he's spying or containing the outside. Put 33, Brian Asamoah, put him in as an outside linebacker. Bynum sucks at safety, so put him at nickel. Start Lewisine as the free safety. Jones would be a liability playing as an outside linebacker as a 3-4 defense. He can't cover slots or running backs. I agree with what you're saying to a point. Daniil Hunter, his true value is rushing the passer. You don't want to take away from him by having him cover or play spy, get after the quarterback, and nothing else. But Brian Asamoah as an outside linebacker, I wouldn't do that. He's too small. He's more of an inside guy. Whereas Patrick Jones, I think he's the best available to play outside linebacker. That is if Daniil Hunter moves to defensive end because the other option is DJ Wanham. And DJ Wanham, he can get to the quarterback just off of speed alone. If he's going to beat his man, he's going to outrun his opponent. But if it's time to shed a block or two, it, it's not in his game. That's just not, you're doing him a disservice by putting him out there. So that's why I got Patrick Jones as the starting outside linebacker. And lastly, Captain Kirk says, also we need to play man-to-man -man a little more. The Eagles games, we play too much soft coverage. Yes, my God, yes, not just the Eagles game, but I feel like for the most part in the Lions game as well, five to six yards off their man pre-snap, zone coverage, eyes forward. They're not aware of what any of the receivers are doing. You keep doing that. Receivers, they're going to run amok. And if you don't have a pass rush, which we have not had the last two games, eventually these receivers, they are going to find the soft spots in the zone. So just to recap, the rookie draft class so far, we have a couple of players that are waiting their turn because of a log jam at the position that they play. Two players that should absolutely be playing right now and one player that's made a big time impact in Ed Ingram.